Alléluia. Nous bénissons le nom du Seigneur. We bless the name of the Lord Jesus. For his work in our lives, for he works in our families. We remember that the word of the Lord tells us and teaches us that we are to follow the ways of the Lord all the days of our lives. We are to seek and walk in his ways all the days of our lives. As we are pursuing the Christ that died on the cross and rose again and lives forevermore, we ought to remember that in order to fulfill his desire, it is to die to ourselves daily. As we are seeking to occupy until he come, as we are seeking to prosper in the ways we have to remember that there is no such a gain unless it is the Lord who's working in our lives. So I pray today, even as we are opening up unto the Lord Jesus for He to pour out inside of our lives, inside of our mind, spirit, soul, and body, that will be renewed in the knowledge of our Lord. That we be able to overcome and overtake. That we be able, able to say, Lord Jesus, I say yea to you, I say yea to you, and I say yea to you. So that we be, be, we be a witness and a testimony of honor unto the Lord Jesus. So we pray that he breaks every yoke that is holding any part of our lives. That he breaks every limitation that is holding every part of our lives. That he breaks all and every single limitation, however they be. So we be fully recovered unto our Christ, unto our Lord, unto our Father. So Lord, we ask you to take over this very time, to take over our mind, to take over our desires, to take over our families, to take over our spouses. Somebody say, Lord Jesus, take over my spouse. Take over my spouse. Lord bless you for what you do now in our lives. Take over our children. Take over our children. Take over our children. Hallelujah. For it is He. For it is He. He's the one. The only true one. That is our surety. Our assurance. In every time of trouble. In every time of adversity. So we bless you God. For your faithfulness. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the name of God. So today we're going to speak on the word the Lord has given to us, which is pick up your cross. <laughs> Hallelujah. We pray that the Lord will heal and speak to us. Pick up, take up your cross and follow Jesus. There is a brother in Oklahoma who had built an actual cross and he's putting on his shoulder and walking with that 
every day, <laughs> like literally in Oklahoma. He's walking with that. He goes around from Oklahoma to California. He goes around with his cross every day. Even though this is a good reminder, it is more profound when the Lord speaks unto us to pick up our cross and to die daily. We're going to go in the word of the Lord in the book of Matthew. Hallelujah. Put that again, the, the word. Put for us the word. Pick up the cross. So that's Matthew. Amen. So pick up your Bible. If you don't have your Bible with you, we have it in the screen. Hallelujah. So chapter 16, verse 24. We're going to read from there. Can we have the word of God on the screen, please? So the leaf, the, the, I said the leaf, the, the book of her, uh, Matthew. Matthew 16, mm -hmm. verse 24. Okay. Then said Jesus unto his disciples. Who is a disciple of Jesus? Hallelujah. Amen. If you and I are disciple, not unbelievers. He's talking to those he has already called, already anointed, already forgiven. Amen? So even though he forgave them and renewed their life, it's not a one-time deal. Hallelujah. The reason why we easily sin is because we forget that it is a continuous battle. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me say that again. The Lord Jesus is speaking to his disciple. In Matthew 16, they were already, in front we say agiri, they were already strengthened in the word. By the time Matthew 16 arrived, hallelujah, they have already followed Jesus for a while. They have already responded to his call, to his say yea, I mean to uh, his call, they say yea to him. But then he speak unto them. He said, for you to follow me, for you to be my disciple. It's not just that you have answered the call. It's not just that you have went and preached. It's not just that you have went and prayed. It's not just that you have went and read the word. But to be my disciple and continually follow me, you must also what? Take up your cross. Before I dive in, let's read. Go ahead. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, mm -hmm. If any man will come after me, if any man continue will come after me, mm -hmm. let him deny himself. Let him deny himself. Let him deny himself. Oh, Jesus Christ. Help us. Let him deny, deny him. himself. Let me explain to you. In a simple way, when you go somewhere and the person tells you, you are not authorized to speak of Jesus over here. And the Lord tells you, speak of me. Denying yourself will mean to not be afraid of being chased out or being kicked out. Or being ridiculed. So right there, in order to deny yourself, it will be, Lord, because you say that I must speak of you, and though people say if I do speak of you, they will chastise me, I'm going to deny myself. Amen? I'm going to deny my choice. I'm going to deny my own thoughts. I'm going to deny my preferences. I'm going to deny my comfort zone. And I'm going to say yes to your voice. And he said he had to do it when? Daily. Continue, please. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, mm -hmm. If any man will come after me, yes. let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Listen. I went yesterday to the store. Ah, Jesus, when I walk in, I saw passing before me an unclean thing. 
Uh, he's a human being, but because he was so uncleanly dressed that I can only see an unclean thing. As I enter the store, right before my face, boom. First thing I did, as I always said, <laughs> I, I, am, I am instant. Why? Because... My eyes were not looking for it. But it came to present itself to my eyes. So if I deny my eyes, what do I do? I take it off. Instead of putting your eyes and say, look at this, that's not right, but you're still looking at it. The strategy of the enemy is to penetrate your sight which is the gate of your heart. The Bible says your eyes is the gate of the window of your. He said, I will not put anything wicked before my. So you will be thinking, oh, look at this. Meanwhile, you saying it and then looking at it, the enemy is working on you. Oh, Lord Jesus. Somebody says spiritual trust strategy. First and foremost, pick up your cross. So, refuse to let your flesh guide and direct you. If you want to pray for the person, pick up your eye off first and pray. Because the enemy has what we call strategy and deceit. Let me give you an example. In the book of Ezekiel, they talk about the devil who was dressed, his entire body was stones and then, and, and then reflecting. So imagine the devil sitting before the throne of God and the angels of God that took off the eye from God and they put it on the devil. So once they put on the devil, they saw the reflection of God. But because they were too long looking at the devil, they thought they were looking at God. Or let's take another example. Adam and Eve. Eve, the Bible said, when she saw that the tree was good, her eye was still on it. When the devil came to deceive Eve, Eve would have checked up first an eye out of it. She could have been praying or doing something better. You know what I'm saying? The Lord says, keep your eyes on the, on the Lord. Deny yourself. Pick up your cross. You go on Facebook, you scroll, you see Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. So all your friends around are posting Jesus, praise the Lord. But in the midst of it, you see somebody naked right there. And then you go back and you say, look at this. But you see, looking at this. <laughs> are you what I'm saying? Deny yourself. Pick up your cross. Somebody calls you. Somebody speaks to you. You know, sister, brother, I want to give you this bribery in order to do this work. And then you're thinking, ah, if you take, it will help you with your bills. No, deny yourself. They're telling you, listen. If you're going to do this, remember the children of Israel in Egypt. The Lord said, let my people go so they may worship me. So you are in a position where the enemy is telling you, just get the money. Get the money. Get the praise. Get the praise. But meanwhile... Your cross, you haven't picked it up. Why? Let's read. Let's, let's continue reading. 
because he gave us the answer. So, verse 25. Verse 25. For whosoever will. For whosoever will. Save. Save his. His life. What happened? Shall lose it. Continue. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what? For what is a man, for what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? I, I, I don't know if you understand what the word says today. It says, what will be the need for us? To gain position, to gain businesses, to gain wealth, to gain promotion, if all those things are preventing us to worship him. Hallelujah. You see, let, let, me, let me really explain this one because I need to, to rebuke. When it comes to the things of Jesus Christ, your flesh will not help you do it. Because your flesh is meant to fight against you. For the Bible says there is war continually between the flesh and the... That when I want to do the things that I know to do, I don't do them. And that the things I know not to do, this I do. Put it in context. When you go, let's, let's take work. When you go to work and you're tired. And you are really excruciated, tired. And you know you got to go to work, what happened? You have two ways. Either you call out or you go. If you decide to go, the reason why you decide to go is because you know if you don't go, you ain't going to get also the pay. I want you to understand this one. If you get this one right, it will help you. Your flesh and your body is worn out. But you still have a choice to call out. You know what I'm saying? Because if you call out, they ain't going to put you in prison. Amen? The only thing that you will lose will be your pay for that day. So you're thinking, no, I must go. But you see, in your mind, you know you will receive a reward. So you are willfully putting down your flesh and you go. Now Jesus says, when it comes to his will, to pray, to fast, to go to church, you will put on yourself the will of not praying. And yet you expect God to bless you anyway. I, I, don't, I don't know if you're understanding. For whatsoever a man that he will, I've heard my, I've heard people praying. They are committing the contrary of the word of God. And they say, God bless me anyway. No. <laughs> he doesn't, let me explain why. The children of Israel, when they were in the Egypt, their mindset were corrupted. They went, as they were going to the promise, they arrived in the wilderness, and they start calling unto God to bless them. They wanted meat. Hallelujah. So that was a blessing. They wanted meat. They said, we want meat, we want meat, we want meat. God said, okay, I'm going to do the miracle. But this is what happened. He brought the quails, and when the quails came and they ate, what happened after? Hallelujah, it came out of the nostril. You feel what I'm saying? He said, I'm going to bless you, but you are not aligned with my will. 
And all you do is ask, bless me, bless me, bless me, why are you not worshiping me? This quail will become a curse for you. Suddenly, you say you are advancing in life and regressing in the spirit. If anyone wants to follow me, let him what? Take up his cross and deny himself. For what will profit a man to gain the whole world? Well, the whole world includes businesses, wealth, money. He did not say you cannot gain it. Hallelujah. He said what will be a profit to your soul if you have all and the peace of the Lord is not on your side. So it says you have to deny thyself so that uh, your soul will not be lost. Why? When your heart is not set right in the will of God, when your spirit is not upright in the will of God, the sin will easily grab on you and you will always fall. When your spirit is set upright in the will of God, the word of God says he will give you the will to do his will. I, I, are you following what I'm saying? Paul said, what, find this word for me. Paul said, whatever I know not to do, that I do. Whatever I know to do, that I don't do. Are you following me? The reason Paul is saying it is not because he's a pagan. Paul is an apostle by then. Paul is a child of God by then. But he realized one thing that some in the beginning or since his time of hold until his calling in the Lord, he realized there is something that is dysfunctioning. But he will tell how to overcome it. Go, read for me. Romans chapter 7 verse 15. Mm -hmm. Romans chapter 7 verse 15. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. Are you what I'm saying? Amen. For that which I would not. For if then I do that which I would not. No, no, bring me back the, the verse 15. Thank you. Thank you for the light. Oh, yes. Thank you. Let there be light. light. <laughs> and it was light. Thank you. So, for that which I do, I allow not for what I would that I do not. But, okay, give me, give me the amplified version. Amen. All it means is what I know not to do, I do what I know not, what I know, what I know to do, I don't. Okay, so go ahead. Romans mm -hmm. uh, chapter 7 verse 15 amplified. For I do not understand my own actions if I'm baffled and bewildered by them. I do not practice what I want to do, but I am doing the very thing I hate and yielding to my human nature my worldliness, oh. my sinful capacity. The Bible says, you yield. Hallelujah. Sometimes I hear people say, no, this was, it was, it was, it was, it was, how did I say that? It was too much for me. It was not too much for you. Because the word of God says that there is nothing, the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13. That there is no temptation that has overtaken you except as it is common to all men. That God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond your measure to bear it. Hmm. So, when you said it was too much, that's why I or dive in or gave in is because you are lying not only to yourself but you are lying to your soul and your spirit. You are lying to everything in you. 
thinking that you are being smarter than God. At that point, you become a blasphemer because you are saying that the word of God is not true over your word. Are you what I'm saying? Let's read again. For I do not understand my own actions. I am baffled and bewildered by them. I am baffled and bewildered by them. You know you should not be sleeping with this person. You sleep with that person. And after you finish sleeping with the person, you're like, ah, Lord, why did I do that? You got my point? You know you should not be lying. You lie and after you say, ah, Lord Jesus, I don't understand. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You know you should not be deceiving. You deceive and then you go, hey, Lord Jesus. Hey, Lord. Oh, Lord, why do I do that? The Lord said, the reason why you do that is because you have not learned to pick up your cross daily. You pray on Sunday and on Monday you are a, a, a thief. You know what I'm saying? You worship on Sunday and on Monday, your mouth is like a is like a cabinet. <laughs> you know cabinet? Toilet. You come to church. Glory. Glory. And then you close your eyes like oh, Jesus. Monday morning. The boyfriend. Allo, chéri? Ça va? Somebody say shame on you. If you are mad, we need to pray for deliverance for you. Because even mad men call on the Lord. You can ask to who? King Saul. And what you say? The demon possessed men do of Gandhara. He said, Lord Jesus, he even know the Lord, the name of the Lord. You follow what I'm saying? When there is no shame and fear of the Lord in your heart, you only count on the grace of God. Let me explain again. I say you only. Because the Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 11, verse 22. Please give me that. Romans chapter 11, give me verse 22. And after we come back to uh, chapter 7, 15. Go ahead, read. Romans chapter 11, verse uh -huh. 22. Then appreciate the gracious kindness and the severity. Appreciate of what? The, the gracious kindness and the severity of did God. He say, did he say appreciate only the gracious kindness? Or only appreciate the grace of God? Or only appreciate the mercies of God? No, he says do appreciate both of them. The kindness of God and the severity. Ah, Lord Jesus. God is not sitting after you looking for your every sin to hit you. But the Bible says he is patient. It does not mean he is idle. I, I even what I'm saying. He is patient, not willing. But you go, 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 go. And then at the moment of time, he says, because you have not believed in me, I give you over your reprobate mind. But when you are over your reprobate mind, you still call on the Lord. Madman. Let me tell you how. In, leave, it, leave it there. Somebody turn on this one for me. In the book of Matthew, go, go ahead, turn it on for me. No, no, you sit down, thank you. In the book of Matthew chapter, chapter 7, there were some who came on the Lord. There were prophets. And when they came unto the Lord, they said, Ah, Lord, in your name we have cast out demons. Amen? In your name we preach. In your name we did wonder and miracles. They did not say in their own name. So it means that they were still having the name of the Lord in their mouth. Hallelujah. And what did Jesus Christ say? He says, depart from me for I never. I don't know. This has to penetrate your soul. You know Jesus cover to cover. 
And yet, he said, I don't know you. And I never knew you. Meaning, your memory of your yes, the day you say yes to the Lord was erased from his memory because of your iniquity. It's not me saying it. It's Jesus Christ. We have two things to come back. We have Romans 11, 22, and then Romans 7, 15 to come back. So you want to write it down, we come back to it. But let's go to Matthew, Matthew 7. Give me from verse 20. Ma oh, Jesus Christ. Help us. Matthew 7. Matthew 7. From verse 20. Uh -huh. Therefore, by their fruit, you will recognize them. By their fruit, you will recognize. So when a brother or a sister say, I love God, I know him, I worship him, da, 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 da. and then the fruit of the person is corrupted. Hallelujah. The Bible says you will recognize them by their fruit. It's not the gift of God that makes you a man of God. It's a fruit in your life that qualifies you as a child of God. Look in the United States, how many big churches and big pastors have agreed to homosexuality? Just look. Look in the United States of America. How many of them have a great ministry? But they have agreed to the contrary of the word of God. And they praise it. This should tell you. Let's go. You read for me. Therefore, therefore, by their fruit you will recognize them uh -huh. as false prophets. Mm -hmm. Verse twenty-one. Not everyone who says to me, "Lord, Lord," will enter the kingdom. Hallelujah. Of as I was saying, you can be mad and then sin call on the Lord. So it's not everyone who calls on the Lord that we enter heaven. He's asking you fruit. He says, show fruit of repentance. He not ask you to show how you can use the word of God or you can speak and preach. No, show fruit of repentance. No, Lord, bless me. Yes, he wants to bless you. But he told you, seek first the kingdom of God and righteousness. What you do is not righteous, but you want the blessing. And when you don't have the blessing, you become sneaky. You become manipulator. Are you know what I'm saying? You start manipulating the circumstances to create your own wealth. Let's go back to the word. Not everyone who says to me what? Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Oh. But. But only he who does the will of my but father. But only he who does the will. will of my father in heaven. What is the will of God? It's to do the word. That's all. He has a great desire to bless you. That's why you still alive. And then, he does not want you to simply become born again. He wants you to become a testimony of his word. So somebody can see you and say, ah, my life is not right. Because I see my sister and my brother, I must put myself right. In order of doing that, somebody sees you and say, ah, this thief. He's also a preacher. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That is because madness has entered. The demon of blindness has entered the heart. At that point, the Bible says in the book of Hebrew that your heart becomes hardened by sin. It does not mean you deny God at that point. Because you still say, Lord, Lord. Somebody say, preach to me. Speak the truth to me. Do you want?
want to become a client of the church or a disciple of Christ? You got to make a choice that is firm, continuous, and upright. At least for the sake of Christ. How do you know you don't even fear God? Because how do you know you don't fear God but you fear men? Before men. Holy, holy, holy. Because you see men are seeing you. But men, when men are not there, and then you are alone with your sin. Sin, sin, sinning, sinning. Because you're thinking God ain't seeing you. That's how you know the fear of the Lord has departed your heart. Because when the fear of God is in your heart, in your secret, you are even more holy. I read again. When the fear of the Lord is in your heart, in your secret, in the most secret place of your heart, even the thought of your mind, you refuse it to be wicked. Let me put an example. They tell you, come tomorrow, and we're going to give you a promotion. You will have $200,000 a year. Meanwhile, you're only doing $30,000 or $40,000 a year. So you hear they're going to give you $200,000 a year. Your heart booms. And they say, okay, the only requirement, you got to only tell us, not demonstrate. Only tell us if you have at least, okay, been a manager for at least two companies. And you know you've never been a manager. But they're, they're thinking... We, 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 we're going to take your word for true. If you just say that you have been manager in two companies in your life, we're going to give you 200000 And now you go home. Before you sleep, you're thinking, how are you going to lie? How are you going to say it? How are you going to turn it around? So your heart is devising mischief. Are you know what I'm saying? You are willfully devising mischief. And when you finish it, you say, oh, Lord, help me. <laughs> help, you, <laughs> help you laugh. <laughs> because you are seeing the opportunity and you are losing your soul. So you start devising mischief. How oh, I'm going to turn this around. Oh, I'm going I'm, I'm to fabricate it. So in your mind, it's already working. But you see, when you let Christ and the fear of God be in your heart, for the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You will start having wisdom in your mind. Because what happens is that as you think about it, you, you will say, ah, I cannot lie. I cannot lie. Mm -mm, I cannot lie. As you start saying, but I could tell them that I was right there. You will say, mm-mm, mm-mm. Mm -mm, I refuse to lie. Because you know that the spirit of God that is uh, with you is not pleased with your mischief. So nobody will even have to speak to you right there. The Holy Ghost is coming, coming to you. That's when you call them, you say, eh. Hey. Or you go there, you say, okay, uh, I really, really want the 200,000, but I've never been a manager. And without realizing... They either tell you, okay, bye-bye, or they say, because you are telling, the, you have told the truth, we take you. See what I'm saying? I have been in a situation where I have given more money to a thief than to a pastor. You know why? Because the pastor was hasting holy, but he was a thief. And the thief came, he said, I, I am a thief. I say, you, I love you, take money. I will bless a liar who tell me he lie than a guy who says he's holy, but he's not holy. In the business the Lord gave us, there is a lady who came to me and then she said, truthfully, what they do is fake. The what they build. And then I told her, you, I like you. 
That's why the Lord said he came for the loss. Amen? When she was able to be truthful to say, ah, we look in to get customer. Because we don't have customer, we do fake stuff. I say, I like you. You told me the truth. You've been honest to me. And I told her, now I'm going to help you to build good stuff so that you will achieve what you were trying to do by treacher and treacher and treacherous way. Treachery. That's why God is aligning himself with you when you tell the truth. When you repent. When you change. But if you call on the Lord and your heart is not circumcised, the Bible says he resists you. Let's go back to the word. We were right, right there where we were. Uh huh. Verse 21, Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of, he of God, of heaven, mm -hmm. but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Mm -hmm. Many will say to me on that day when I judge them, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. As I was saying, they were mad, but they were still having the word of God in their mouth. Continue. Lord, Lord, have you not prophesied in your name and driven out demons? Driven out demons. Driven can out you, demon. Can you imagine? Somebody is possessed, but he, he drives out demon. <laughs> yeah, this one is a mystery. <laughs> Judah was possessed. He was a thief. And the Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 9, he received power to drive a demon. Are ah, you know what I'm saying? The power, let, let me explain to you how it works. In the, let me explain to you so you understand better. So you're not confused. The ministry and the power of God is independently of your faith. That's why King Nebuchadnezzar was called a servant of the Lord. Read again. Let me explain again so you understand. God can use Balaam. You know Balaam? Was Balaam a man of God? Was God speaking to him? So don't confuse yourself. Even donkey. God can use. When you think because you hear God, then therefore you are from God, that's where sometimes you make a mistake if you don't keep the word of God. Demon, talk to God. The devil, talk to God. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the days when the Lord has uh, his meeting with the sons of God in the book of Job, the devil came and he said, here I am. <laughs> the Bible said that uh, the Lord Jesus told unto disciple Peter, he said the devil came and asked permission of you. So even the devil goes, I say, you, you, got, you, got, you, you, you got to get your doctrine right. The Bible said the demon believe and they tremble but the christian believe uh, it does not tremble you have to set your heart unto the lord in a true way listen let me tell you how it works when your heart is cold for jesus christ you hear the word of god and then he does not make anything in your life that's when you know your heart has become cold because the word of God is the fire that always got you. Like a, you're, you're boiling because you know this word is what is your life. When God chastised me, I say praise your name. When God bless me, I say praise your name. When God treat me, I say bless your name. Why? Because whether he is good or severe, I know is my God. Verse 22, read for me. Verse 22. 
Many will say to me on that day when I judge them, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name and driven out demons in your name and done many miracles in your name? And then I will declare to them publicly, I never knew you. Depart from me. You are, you are banished from my presence. You will act wickedly, disregarding my command. Are you, are you, are you, are you, are you hearing it? My son, do not commit fornication. You go, you commit fornication. And you say, oh Lord, I don't understand. No, you do. You do understand. My son, do not commit adultery. You go commit adultery. Oh Lord, I don't understand. No, you do. My son, my daughter, do not commit prostitution. Do not commit prosmukit. Uh, what is that? Yada, yada, yada. <laughs> you go commit it. You call the brother, you say, ah, my daddy died because of money. And your daddy is still alive. You know what I'm saying? You kill your daddy just right there for money. And when you finish, you go to church. Praise the Lord, oh, praise the Lord. There is something that is dysfunctional in that brain. When you dress, you put yourself in the mirror, and then you see all your, your chest, and then you do like this, and then you like, yeah. And then you go to church, praise the Lord, praise the Lord abomination because intentionally you see the reflection of you you appreciate it and you want somebody to see it wickedness demonically possessed for such people like that I will call fire on you without instance you dress you see that the paint is going among your mountain. You look in the mirror and then you intentionally go to present that to the people. Demonic possess. Legion. Wickedly devised. You are a man of God. They call you to go preach. And then you are calculating, ah, if I preach about this one, I'm going to have a lot of amen and a lot of offering. You are a thief. When they say go preach in the church, you ask how many people are there. They say, ah, 10. You say, ah, there are 10 people. Are there. I ain't going to preach there. You say, how many people are there? They say, ah, 1,000. Hey, you calculate if 1,000, everybody gives $10. So you arrive. Oh, I, I, I hear God say that two people, no, 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 20 people, the Lord said give 1,000, you already calculated how much you're going to pay your rent. You are a thief. But you still use the name of God. You are a prophet. People come to you and you say consultation cost $300. Balam. And for such things, the name of Jesus Christ is being ashamed by the unbelievers. For the word of God says that because of you, the unbeliever, they cursed our God. And then you are angry to the preacher who told you the truth. You are angry at God. Because his word will not pass by simply because you are angry. Amen? Give me that word. Continue. Verse 23. Uh -huh. and, and, then, and then I will declare to them publicly, I never knew you. Depart from me. You are, you are banished from my presence. You will act wickedly, disregarding my command. Mm, Verse continue. 24. So everyone who hears this word. Which word? Mind, the word of God. Am I preaching the word of God? 
Are you hearing it? He said, everyone, children, adult, elder, holder, daughter, whatever, everyone who hear the word of God. Look at yourself and then ask you this question. What are my goal in the kingdom of God? What are my goal? Because you can work to expand the kingdom of God. You can work to bring people to the Lord. But Paul said, I bring my flesh under subjection so that after I have what? Preach to others, I be myself not. Do you know that the Lord Jesus will not refrain to disqualify you if you play with him? Read Revelation, the seven churches that were called churches. They were not called clubs. They were called churches. So they were talking about the name of Jesus Christ. But they were against Christ. Because they were committing wickedness, iniquity. It is your prerogative to become a light of the world. You are called to be a light of the world. So when people see you, they can say, ah, I see my sins. Are you what I'm saying? Because you lighten the sins. You lighten the sins. And because of you, somebody is converted. And your name, and the, the name, so your name is written next to the person for your salvation. But when because of you, somebody fall, the Bible says what? It would have been better for you to not be what? Born. Eh, sometimes you are playing too much with the word of God. The Lord just says, Whosoever calls one of my little to fall, it will be better. You are not born at all. Because they're going to put a, I'm going to a male stone, which is a big one. And then they're going to throw you in the sea. First and foremost, if they throw you in the middle of the sea, you ain't gonna be you're gonna be able you ain't, you ain't gonna be able to swim until the seashore. That's the first thing. Second thing, they're gonna put you in the middle of the sea with that milestone on your neck. The Lord Jesus is talking about it. He did not come to speak about grace only. He did not come to speak about truth uh, only. The Bible says he came for grace and Truth. He gives you grace and lead you in truth. He speaks your truth as he's giving you grace. Both of them. So pick up your cross. Refuse to let yourself be manipulated by the demonic act. Refuse to be channel of demonic activities on the earth. Impurities, lies, deceit, covetousness, adultery, fornication, masturbation, thief, robbery, wrong thought, refuse. If there is nobody with you to rebuke, you rebuke yourself. <laughs> Hallelujah. Rebuke yourself. Say, no, I rebuke myself. I shall follow the ways and the word of God. Because the devil is always seeking who? Hallelujah. Not who he will devour, who he may devour. Meaning, who will give him the opportunity? 
as long as you are in the pasture of God, he ain't going to touch you. Amen? He ain't going to devour you. So he's looking what he may do. Hallelujah. Not what he shall do or will do, but what he may do. So he's looking who's the weakest one. Who's the weakest one? So he's looking. When he, when he spot the weakest one, he said, that's a good prayer. So he comes with his strategy. But it is your duty to call on the Lord. So your weakness becomes strength. So you may not be devoured. And the church is quiet. You can say amen. amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. God will bless you. That's true. He will increase you. That's true. But he said, what is the benefit for you to have all and lose your soul? What's the benefit? What is the benefit? Huh? Nothing. Give me back Romans chapter 11, 22. Romans chapter 11, verse 22. Mm -hmm. Then appreciate the gracious kindness and the severity of God to those who fell into spiritual ruin. To those who fell into spiritual ruin. Amen. Amen. They are spiritually dysfunctional. They have spiritual diabetes. Amen. Too much sugar-coated gospel. <laughs> Amen. Continue. What happened? Severity. But to you, God's gracious kindness. God said he's going to show you grace and kindness, but there is a condition. What is that condition? If you continue in his kindness. If you also, you continue in that kindness. By faith and obedience. By faith him. and obedience to him. You call by faith the riches, but you don't obey his word. You are not going to continue in the kindness. Hallelujah. By faith and obedience to him, otherwise. You, you too will be cut off. Hmm. Hallelujah. Obey his word, as he said. Otherwise, you will also be cut off. Here's the problem. The problem is that no one will complain that why is God cutting me off? Because regardless of your complaint, he ain't going to change it. You cannot bring God to the Supreme Court to say, okay, I'm going to judge him so that he will lose the case. <laughs> it ain't going to happen. So it's better to humble oneself and say, Lord, let your will be done in my life. Because let me tell you something. The power you have to sin is the same power you have not to sin. Amen? The reason for it is because the power of sin has been destroyed. The Bible says he came to not to destroy sin, but the what? The power of sin. So the power that is in you is the same level to say yes to sin and no to sin. You don't need additional prayer. All you need is the same power to use. When you have misused your power, you will be calling on grace. Grace ain't going to come because you still have the power to say no. And the reason why you keep on sinning is not because you lack grace. It's because you are aligned to yourself. So once you realize that you have the same power in which you used to fall, you will take that same power to get up. Let me put it this way. When Peter sinned, when he denied Christ, oh Lord Jesus, thank you. When Peter sinned and he denied Christ, the prayer before he fell, the Bible said that the Lord prayed that when he fall, because he's going to fall. So when he fall, not if he fall, when you're going to fall, he said, I pray that you will get back up. So the prayer was already done and the grace was already given. 
When Peter fell, notice something. Our Lord Jesus, you are so good. The Bible says, he lied and denied Christ three times. But when he saw and heard the crow, eh, do what? The rooster, what? Crow, what happened? He remembered the word of Christ and he cried bitterly. He, you know, this is a key for many of you. Even when he fell, he did not pray that fake prayer, oh Lord, your grace is sufficient. That's not how it works. The grace is not sufficient for your sins. It's for... <laughs> let, let me say that again. The grace of God is not sufficient for your sin. It's sufficient for your weaknesses. Let me explain what the difference is. Your weakness is that you don't know how to speak. That's a weakness. Your weakness is that you cannot walk so far to, to evangelize. Your weakness, you don't know how to sing. Your weakness, you have a, a, a part of your body that is uh, unable to cause you to do something. That's weakness. Because the word that is used in, in, in Greek by Paul is literally the, the, the sickness in my flesh. Because when he was talking, he was talking about the thorn on his flesh, not the sin in his flesh. Are you following me? So he prayed three times that the thorn, it could have been that beat him so much. Because remember, they kept on beating up Paul. So they beat him up so much that he became somehow lame somewhere, either blind or lame. So he was so weakened that he said, Lord, please heal me. And they all said, hey, I ain't going to be healed. But, but in, that, in that weakness, I will demonstrate my strength. And people use this one to pray for their sin. Not only you are corrupted and corruptible, but you corrupt the word of God. Not understanding it. No. The guy keep on uh, smoking weed or cocaine and he say, in my weakness, the Lord is friend. No, yeah. Because you got to understand first what the word is applying to. The Bible says the reason why you don't have the answer to your prayer is because you pray, eh? Miss. There is a sister. She gave me that word one day. She's completely in fornication. And then she said, oh, in my weakness. I say, you know, you, you are in sin. You are not in weakness. We call it sins. You feel what I'm saying? In your sins, his grace is not sufficient. In your sins, his grace has taught you that you can get out of it. Because in his grace, he died on the cross already. Are you following? So where we were still sinners, he died on the cross. So that grace is that he already died, so you are no longer under the power of it. That's the grace. He said, you will know the, amen? You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free, period. You will know the truth. If you call on the name of the Lord, but your life is still not upright. Today, he say, harden not your heart as your fathers did. And they all died in the wilderness. For otherwise, you too will be cut off. You got to tell to yourself, I refuse to be the bush akano of the devil. You know what's bush akano? La chair akano. La, no, la chair akano. You see, la chair akano, when somebody's in the army and the person is not really a great soldier, they send them first before the enemy. And the enemy has a time to use all the weapons on them. Uh -huh. We call it la chair akano. Yeah, the frontline people. 
Uh, they, they, not, they, they don't bring the general, the, the good one on the front line. They always bring the wicked one on the front line. That's the unfortunately strategy in military. Because by the time the enemy is just shoot, shooting you because you're weak, that's how the devil does. The devil looking for the weak one. So they bring the weak one on the front line. And when they finish with you, and then they have wasted the munition, then the bombardment arrives. Unfortunately, that's how it works. We call it la chair canon in French. But you do not want to be in the front line while you have not yet strengthen your backup you must have the lord jesus at all time so that at the day you are feeling in your heart the shift of the enemy you can truly call hear the truth and be set free give me Romans chapter 7 verse 15 romans chapter 7 verse 15 verse 15 Somebody say, I must hate sin. You say, I must hate sin. He has called us to hate sin. To have a disgust for sin. When you sin, see, this is how it works. When you see sin over here, you don't pray for it. I always say that. You flee. The Bible did not say pray for sin. It said flee from sin. It said resist the devil, not resist sin. Hallelujah. When you confuse the two, you go in a room with a sister, and then you are both in the room, and you say, oh, Lord, help me, help me. Hey, Lord, help me. No, I ain't going to help you. Get out. Hallelujah. You see money over there, and then you want to steal. You go towards it, and you say, oh, Lord, in my weakness, you strength. No, uh-uh. Get away from there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Flee from sin. Joseph understood it. When that lady came to him, the wife of Bodiva, she said, Hey, Sherry. Hey, honey. He's like, That's weird. She said, You know, you're really handsome. Eh? He said, This one. <laughs> Hallelujah. She said, Listen, God is not here. Your brother are not here. Your church is not here. Your pastor is not here. The Holy Ghost is in heaven. So come, there is nothing that we accuse you. Let's do it. The Bible says, She held. His coat. She said, come over here. He said, you take my coat. I go. <laughs> Jesus, help me. <laughs> That's how it works. You run first before to pray. But if you dare, oh, Lord, I pray I will not fall. And then the lady is taking off your, your button. Oh, Lord Jesus, I will not fall. Oh, God, oh, protect me. Ah, God, ah. Liar. Deceiver. And then you fall. And then you say, hey, what did I do? You blaspheme God. That's what you did. You orchestrated. The Bible says in the book of Hebrew that those who willfully do what? Give me that word. Those who willfully. It means you know, and you know, and you know, this you should not do. And what is willfully? It means you even, you even, from the bottom of your heart, you calculate it. You call the person. You call the sister. You call the brother. And then you say, hey, I want to come to your home today. Is your husband there? Is your wife there? Is your parents there? So you, you, you already willfully calculating. It's not like you were walking and then a lady just jumped on you. No, 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 no. You were sitting calculating. Okay, I will say that uh, I'm going for a mission of two weeks. 
But your mission was in a motel. So you willfully calculating that mischief. The Bible says what? Give me that word. Uh huh. For if we go on. For if we go on. Willfully. Willfully. And deliberately. And deliberately. Sinning. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Read it. For if we go on willfully and deliberately sinning. After receiving, After receiving the, the knowledge of the truth. Mm. Because if you did not know, you can, uh, you can claim saying, Lord, I did not know. <laughs> but let me tell you something. Even if you don't know, you perish. Okay? But the Bible says that they perish by lack of. So the lack of knowledge does not prevent you to perish. That's one. But. Even if you want to claim that I did not know, the Bible said that you then now knew the truth. Hallelujah. You knew the truth. You preached the truth. You taught the truth. You read the truth. And when you finish, you deliberately and willfully. Go ahead. For if we go on willfully and, del and deliberately sinning after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice to atone for our sins. That is, no further offering to anticipate. But a kind of awful and terrifying expectation of divine judgment and the fury of a fire and burning wrath which will consume the adversaries, those who put themselves in opposition to God. Are, are you hearing it? He's talking about his children. Stop drinking spiritual Kool-Aid. No. The book of Hebrew is a book to the Hebrews, hallelujah, who converted to Christ. You follow me? Verse 28. Verse 28. Anyone who has ignored and set aside the law of Moses is put to death without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Anyone at the time of the law who ignored that law, and then I say ignore that law, and then went on and sinned, he was put to death on the testimony of two or three. But what happened? How much greater punishment do you think he will deserve who has rejected and trampled under the foot? How much greater punishment do you think he will the one deserve who has what? Rejected and trampled under the <sighs> foot the son of God. Do you understand this word? Who has rejected and trampled on the foot the Son of God, and that does what? And has considered unclean and common the blood of the covenant. And I consider unclean and common, in another word, mock the blood of the covenant that sanctified, sanctified him. him. The blood of Jesus was shed on the cross because of your wickedness. Now you have been redeemed and you play with that blood. And has and has insulted and has insulted the spirit of of grace. Are you know what I'm saying? What is insulting the spirit of grace? You are keeping on sinning and you say, Lord, your grace, you are an insult to God. Because grace was not intended to empower you for sin. You have insulted the spirit of, uh, of grace. You have to refuse to be Hebrew 10. 
You have to refuse it. What I want to hear is well done. Good. And what is the need for me to gain the whole world and lose my soul? The, bad, the, the logic that says that those who commit fornication, meaning who are causing the body, the temple of the Lord, they're misusing the temple of the Lord. The Bible said that the Lord will judge them. Amen? The reason for is because in your body, you are supposed to honor God. For he said, present yourself as a living, holy and living sacrifice which is your reasonable act of worship. Not present your words, but your body must align the will of God. Your intent, your ideas, your thoughts, your plans. Some people, they have been given authority in the church. And when I spoke about authority, I'm talking about, let's say, for instance, a lady is given a, uh, the, the authority to sing, for instance. And she's the one leading the choir or leading the, the, the church. And then she has misbehaved. And now we say, okay, the church says, listen, because you misbehave, we don't want you to sing anymore. Instead of repenting, she's like, well, I'm the good singer. We will see what you will do anyway. I feel what I'm saying. That's that type of spirit that we call the spirit of Achan. That's the reason why the Lord has told us that from now on, I mean from now on since a Friday, we should engage continually in spiritual warfare. Because you see, the sin of a man the sin of a woman is like cancer. Hallelujah. It contaminates. Imagine somebody who uses his hands to the unclean and pray for you. Are you know what I'm saying? If yourself, you are not covered, you're going to receive exchange of demons. Are you know what I'm saying? So, you yourself, you must make sure that you are always following the ways of Christ. That's why he says, if you want to follow me, pick up your cross daily and deny yourself. So that the activity of the blood on your behalf will not be erased. So that if any even cast spell on you, it won't work. Because you do not give room to the devil. Tell to somebody, you must quit sin. You must quit sin. Hallelujah. It is the will of God that no one perish. But all comes to the knowledge of the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ. For whosoever is in Christ is renewed. Hallelujah. Your whole you have gone away. If your whole you is still there, you are a necromancy. Necromancy. No, how is it that? Necromancy. <laughs> Necromancy. That's what you are. Because you are calling your spirit of a whole you. You became a soothsayer. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you got to refuse. The Lord is not after you to destroy you. And the Bible says he will destroy you if you are not after him.
So we pray, Lord Jesus, that by your grace and your severity, for he says consider both the grace and the severity, the kindness, the goodness, and the severity. The severity of God is not to scare you away, but is to tell you that he's serious about his will. The grace of God is to tell you that even if you fall, you can get back up. Do not stay there and linger in. So he prayed for Peter, saying, I prayed that even you fall, when you fall, you will get back up. And when you get back up, you must also strengthen your brethren. You must tell to your brethren how bad it is to be in that position. How dangerous it is for our soul to be in that position. For if the Lord comes now, you are in hell. Straight. For the word of God says you have trample on the foot and you have insulted the spirit of grace. So I pray that this word will not just pass through your word and through your hearing. But this word will get you to get out and be daily a disciple of Christ at all times. That you will always screen your intention through the word of God. That any of it that is unclean, you will refuse and deny. You have the power to deny the devil. You have the power to deny the demons. And you must use that power at all times. You must use that power to deny access in your life. For whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. When you go and you find a strong man, bind him. So whatever strong man in your life that is bothering you, bind it out. Because God has called you to become light. Light to the world. He did not call you for other purpose but to be light to the world. He sent you in the midst of wolves. So you be light to the world. But you must not take the word of God lightly. You must rather take the word of God as a light. In your path. And I pray. That the fear of God. Will kindle your heart. That at all times. You will refuse. To become a channel. Of the activities of the demons. That every spirit. Contrary to the spirit of God. You will detect it. You will cast it out. And you will let yourself be sucked. By the spirit of the Lord. That truth will be found on your lips. That truth will be found on your lips. That you will become the light of darkness. That because of you, God will refrain the destruction of the wicked. To give an opportunity to the wicked to repent. Because he saw you and he said, I can steal give grace to somebody who is not in my camp. Because of Abraham, God relented to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. So because of you, God is seeking not to destroy. So don't be among those who are provoking God to anger and to wrath. But be among those who are relenting the wrath of God upon the wicked. Let the truth of God, let the spirit of God strengthen you. That you may be bound to his heart continually to the praise of the Lord Jesus. 
Amen. Amen. Amen.